It is time, finally, for the great wheel video. We're gonna talk about this wheel behind me. Reasonably priced How much is it? It's like 62 bucks. We're gonna talk about all of its names. And if you're in Scotland, the muckle wheel, how to spin with it. A little bit of restoration that this one still needs. Look at that. Wow. And to do that, we are gonna need to soak some corn husks. So let's get that going. And then we're gonna talk about this really cool, fascinating piece of textile history, the Great Wheel. Also known as the high wheel, the wool wheel, the walking wheel, the long thread wheel, the single thread wheel, as opposed to double drive, get it? And if you're in Scotland, the muckle wheel. Also remember to subscribe because this is a YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm going to refer to this mostly as the great wheel because I think it's pretty great. In terms of spinning history, spindles were definitely first, but then people figured out that they could use a larger wheel to turn the spindle more efficiently. That type of spinning wheel was invented and developed in India and China, and it was used for spinning cotton. Eventually, that idea made its way to Europe, and during the medieval period, we start to see images of the Great Wheel being depicted in like illuminated manuscripts and stuff like that. So this type of wheel in Europe, in this sort of configuration, dates back to the medieval period. So what were people spinning with a wheel like this? There wasn't a lot of cotton happening in medieval Europe, so it was definitely being used to spin wool. On my board, I put purpose, woolen wool weft, worsted with a question mark, because there is some references to people spinning both types of yarn with this kind of a wheel. And I've even found some references to um, people spinning things as fine as sewing thread with this type of a spinning wheel. I'm gonna get more into the thread stuff in a different video and I really think that we could probably do an even bigger deep dive into the history of woolen and worsted and all of those different types of fibers and preparations and spinning. So we'll save that also for another video. I really want to focus on the spinning wheel and get to some of the spinning for this, but I don't want people to go away from this video thinking that this type of wheel historically was only used for woolen spinning because there are historical references that it was also used for some worsted spinning as well. So we'll leave it at that and keep on moving. What's next? <laughs> where I got my wheel. I went to a flea market with Mark about a year ago, I think. Where the finding was some labor. Yeah. Yeah. How much is it? 62 bucks, that one's 72. I mean, that's 62 not, and 72. Not very oh, there's another one. And there's another one over there. 62 bucks is totally reasonable you know, for something that would just be art in your house. But... I don't know how to work it on. You don't think so? I think it could work again. But no. Why not? No. This would be corn husks to hold the um, spindle. This would be a braided corn husk. And this is to adjust your tension. And look at how much this was oiled. Wow, this could totally spin again. What is Mark even talking about? Found a use for Starbucks. <laughs> See, look. It's protected, it's excellent, thank you. <laughs> Success. So the condition of this wheel is kind of mid. A couple things going on with this wheel. One, the drive wheel is pretty wobbly, but it's good enough to spin with. There is a chunk taken out of the drive wheel itself, but 
this type of wheel um, it doesn't need to have the weight in the rim to maintain its momentum like some sort of drive wheels would need to have this is being turned by the hand of the spinner and so if the rim itself can hold the drive band we're gonna say it's good enough not great but it's good enough the cool thing that this wheel has is the original bearings these are corn husk bearings and they're just tied onto these maidens with little scraps of some kind of, it's probably just a little scrap of a rag that was used to tie these onto the maidens how amazing is that these bearings are made from corn husks and now you know what we were up to soaking those corn husks i had a spindle made from bob and boy and i'll put their information in the video description so this wheel needed to have a new spindle entirely recreated because it was missing the spindle that it had at some point these spindles are very sharp and uh, it's easy to like back into it and have it stab you in the back. I keep a cork on this one, <laughs> but this is what it looks like and it just kind of sticks out so you can absolutely run into it and hurt yourself pretty badly. A lot of people say that this was the type of wheel and spindle that is referenced in the Sleeping Beauty uh, fairy tale where she pricks her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel if we go with the wording that Disney uses then this is the only thing that makes sense because the wheel that they show in the movie that was some kind of weird <laughs> animated abomination but um, I've talked about that several times but if we're going by that wording this is what would make sense to be used in that context because this is the kind of wheel that has a spindle attached to it. In the original, 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 it was actually just a spindle and there was no wheel involved. But anyway, moving right along. It's time to make some corn husk bearings. I think they've been soaking long enough, so we're gonna head over and do that. I'm using ones that I got at the store. They're meant for tamales. Um, you could use fresh corn husks. That works too. So let's make some bearings. Pay no attention to the treadle over there. That's an entirely different spinning wheel that I found at a thrift shop that you've never seen yet. That'll be in a video coming soon. Okay, we're gonna focus on the corn cob husks right now. I have a, this is my little bowl where I put uh, little odds and ends of bits of threads and ribbons and spun yarns and things. So I think we'll find something in there that we can use to tie it onto the maidens. This is what these bearings look like on the maidens currently and we're going to try and replicate these uh, by braiding our own corn husk bearings oh look there's even there's even i wonder if this was to keep it from turning do you see that i wonder if this was loose and they wedged it down in there with a little scrap of fabric um there's something over here too it's stiffer and brittle almost like leather and it comes up and holds on to this bearing here so it looks like it looks like they Yep, it looks like they tied around and then crisscrossed it up and around on here. How cool. I kind of hate to cut these bearings off, but if I don't, this wheel can't be used. And it'll just sit and languish. And so, in the interest of having this dear old lady spin again, um, I think that we need to give her fresh bearings. Um, but we have them here for posterity, and if you find old bearings like this, you can make the choice to cut them off or not. Um, you know what, actually, I wonder if I can slip this bearing out from the bottom and then take this whole bit off the top. I'm going to try and see if I can work it out and see if we can get it off of there without actually cutting. I didn't have to cut it. It did kind of come loose on its own, um, but it's very, it's very stiff. I think it's full of old grease from uh, having the bearings oiled and greased. So here's what it looks like. And this was just that little scrap. Um, and it's just, that's all it is. It's just braided corn husk. 
It looks to me just like a three stranded braid. So that's what we'll do. Now this other one is just lashed on there for dear life. <laughs> I wonder if it kept falling off and someone was mad and they said, you're not falling off again, which is funny because this is the one that actually broke. I, I think that it was held on there for so long that this part wore through and eventually the bearing just broke off. You can definitely see that there was oil happening here. It's all darker colored down here than up at the top. So this one, I believe we will need to cut. Um, so I'm just gonna carefully take my scissors up there. It's, it's very crumbly and I have sort of that dirty, dusty feeling in my fingers just touching this. It's kind of gross, but um, I think this wheel will feel much better, like she can breathe again once we get a new one on her. I see you struggling. Yeah. You need a hand or a cutty thing? Cutty thing. <laughs> it cuts. Thanks, Wheel Daddy. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. You're right, that's much better. Oof. When I clip it, you can see all the dust. This is really crumbly. Oh. oh. Thanks. Um, I think this is the debate between preserving what's historical and using what's historical and getting it to a usable state requires some aggressive measures to be done and so that's just what I've chosen to do for my wheel if you have one that you want to preserve that's up to you um, it's just different different ways of doing things please don't attack me in the comments <laughs> I made an informed decision and I went with it so here we are I wiped them down with uh, just some water to clean the dust off and then I went over it with some boiled linseed oil and that will hopefully protect the wood a little bit. It looks better already. On this type of wheel, the spindle stays put and it doesn't come on and off. Just the yarn is wound off of it. So the bearings are going to be tied to these mating, maidens and loop around on this wood to hold the spindle in place. So we're going to braid some bearings and then we will tie them on around there. I haven't done this before. I've made corn husk dolls before, so I'm familiar with corn husks, but not for making bearings. But these feel wet enough. I think I'm gonna go fairly thick with my strips. I bet I could get all of it off of just this one piece right here. here piece here mark if you would do the honors of being my clamp and we will just do a three part braid nice and tight like that i think it's looking a little bit like the original if you've braided hair before this is same thing. I tied it off with a little bit of linen that I had laying around. Let's see how we did and compare. I'm going to trim off the ends, of course, but I think, I think we did pretty good. Look at that. Wow. All right. I think that's a pretty good replica. I am proud of that work right there. Okay, let's do another one because we need two, one for each maiden. What came first, cornhusk bearings or braiding somebody's or braiding your daughter's hair? Very sure that braiding hair came first. Very certain. Never know. The wisdom of mothers before me says <laughs> I'm positive. There, I like kind of imitating the haphazard um, make it stay look of the original. So we'll just kind of 
haphazardly use some different things and crisscross it and just kind of <laughs> get it on there like that. I, I kind of like that little homage to the to the original. I'm gonna spin with it as is and then um, later probably in a day or two when these are dry and they've shrunken down a little bit I'll put another ribbon on here just to make sure it's tight enough to keep the spindle in place but I think that we're good enough for now um so we could trim these just a little so they look a little more tidy as the originals were a little glow up this is ready to go on the wheel and we can tie a drive band on now we're almost ready to spin. I'm often asked about what to use for a drive band, what kind of material. I think that uh, people would use whatever they had available. Um, probably some waxed linen would be very appropriate. I think the key is just, no, 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 don't fall down. Don't fall off. Oh, I fell off. No, it keeps falling off while I'm trying to tie it on. And it's very frustrating. The way that we tension a wheel like this is uh, to first, of course, make sure everything is aligned with the drive wheel where it should be. Right now it's over the whirl, but obviously it's not turning, turning anything because the tension's not tight enough. So if we increase the tension, then it has enough friction to turn the spindle. So I'm going to use my little single wing nut down here. And when I undo that, this slides back and forth. And that's how I can put more or less tension on there. So I'm gonna increase the tension a little bit. Now, if I increase too much, uh, it just kind of bogs everything down and makes it harder to turn. When I'm spinning, I'm going to be putting a little bit of pressure off of the tip of this as I draw my thread back against the tip. So when I put a little bit of pressure on the tip of this, it stops turning, which means that I need to increase this pressure just a little more, increase the tension a little more. All right, so now let's try it again. And if I put a little pressure here, it continues to turn, it continues to spin. So this means that I can draw back against the tip of the spindle while turning the drive wheel and it's not gonna it's not gonna slow down my spin. I'll be able to keep going. So that is how I tension my drive wheel. ready to spin. Now there's a couple different ways that you can long draw. One is where the twist is pulling the fibers out of your fiber supply. So you've got twist, twist pulling out, fiber supply with no twist. And there are some people who would argue that that is still more like a worsted spin than a woolen spin. Some people would argue that a true woolen spin where you have your roll egg and you let the twist build up and you pull back and the twist is jumping to multiple points within the roll egg and then you continue drafting from there to even out the slubby bits. I can't do it in talks. <laughs> it has to go like a quick fluid motion. So let me grab a different little leg here and show you again. I'm not gonna talk, I'm just gonna do it. Ta-da! It requires quite a bit of coordination between you and the wheel and the wool and the twist. Like there's just a lot happening right there and that type of long draw where you have the 
twist jumping into different points and you're still pulling back to draft out the thicker spots. That is why the tension matters because you need to be able to pull back a little bit against the spindle. And we can kind of adjust as needed. And there we go. Looking good enough. Now, um, I see a lot of people who do this kind of like thing um, because you need to get it moved over so that it can build up the cob on the spindle. And it doesn't do that out here. This is where it's coming off the tip to get twist to spin. And you need to get it over here. Well, instead of doing all this kind of stuff, which is like really awkward and not comfortable, ergonomics matter. And I'm sure that people figured out the most comfortable way to do this because this would have been done many hours to spin all the things that needed to be spun. So what I figured out is if I take my hand that's controlling the wheel and I just hook my thumb. So I back it up a little bit and then I hook my thumb under my yarn and then I bring this hand over to turn the wheel, then it, it lines it up straight with where it needs to be. So I do that and then it, see, and I hardly even need to walk at all. Um, mostly I just stand here, but I mean, I'm five foot seven, so that might depend on your height and your reach, but, um, Yeah, for me, it's just, it's it's not even walking, it's just reaching. I have this very bright kind of neon, definitely combed top. You can see everything is very aligned. And so I'm just gonna take a pinch off of this and spin from the fold. Spinning from the fold means that I'm going to take the fibers and fold it over my finger just like that that is a lovely high twist worsted spun yarn so there we have it we covered everything on the list of stuff to talk about and as I'm sure you can tell, there is still a lot more to learn about, talk about, spin up about the great wheel, because it is pretty great. A lot of the spinning that I've already done on this so far was either practice or spinning for the COE. And if you're interested in that journey, all of that is over on my Patreon. Thank you, patrons. You keep this channel running. Truly, I appreciate all of your support. Let me know what you think about this great wheel down in the comments and what other questions you have about this wheel so that I can plan for more videos about this beautiful lady that I'm knocking into. You know what, before I forget and stab myself in the back, I'm gonna just pop that little cork on there. That's important. <laughs> No OSHA violations here. We cork that spindle every time. <laughs>